And then at the end here, I'm asking it the most important question that I always ask ChatGPT when I want it to give me the best responses. Learn to code has been a mantra on the internet for the last 10 years, and it's pretty obvious why. As the median wage in America has stagnated and wealth across the world has been destroyed by inflation, programmer salaries have only continued to rise. But when a lot of people here learn to code, the first thing they think is, I can't, it's too complicated. I paid $200,000 and spent four years getting a computer science degree, and I'm still not that good at it. Luckily, you'll learn to code 10 times faster than I did, and instead of paying $50,000 a year for the privilege of learning to code, you'll be able to get started for free with ChatGPT. But the big issue with people that are learning to code with ChatGPT is that they're not prompting ChatGPT properly. So if you watch to the end of the video, I'll be taking you through step-by-step step the types of questions that you should be asking to efficiently learn how to code using ChatGPT. All using real life examples of things that I've asked ChatGPT and when it's given me a good answer and when it's given me a bad answer. So go down below and smash the like button for learning how to code and let's level up your brains. All right, guys, here's my instance of ChatGPT. I'm using GPT-4, but you could probably get by using GPT-3.5. However, I have found that GPT-4 is meaningfully better for programming than GPT-3.5. And so if you don't want to drop the money on GPT-4, maybe you can try out something like Google Bard as an alternative to GPT-3.5. So next, let's go ahead and jump into some examples that I wanted to highlight of types of questions that are going to be really good to ask ChatGPT and then other types of questions that are going to be not good to ask ChatGPT. So the first one that I've written here is write a function to make limit orders with the Coinbase Advanced Trade API. And you'll see that the first thing that it responds is the Coinbase Pro API, which no longer exists, provides a way to place limit orders and here's how you can place the limit orders using Python. And then it gives me a bunch of code that if you start to read through this code, it looks like maybe this code might work, which this is one of the big things that you need to look for with ChatGPT. When you ask it a basic question like this, write a function to make limit orders using the Coinbase Advanced Trade API, it's not going to ever tell you, I don't know how to do that. So instead, I'm going to show you the Coinbase Pro API. It's instead just going to hallucinate the answer to your question. And if you didn't know any better, you would try to execute this code and maybe if Coinbase Pro is still working when you're watching this video, maybe that code would still work for Coinbase Pro, but it's not going to work for Coinbase Advanced Trade because the API endpoints are totally different and the variables that you need to pass to the Advanced Trade API is just different than the variables that you would have passed to the Coinbase Pro API. And again, you would have to know that what it had just given you was basically a hallucination and something that wouldn't work for the use case that you had set out. And so instead, a better way to ask the exact same question to ChatGPT is to instead give it a lot more more detail than I was giving it before. So I think as a good rule of thumb, you want to avoid trying to feed it prompts that are one sentence long because it's going to hallucinate a bunch of other details about your prompt and then inject those things into its answer that you might not want. And so instead, what you should be doing is trying to give it very specific, very long prompts that give it as much detail as possible so that the response that it gives you back is very precise to the information that you have given ChatGPT. So here I'm saying I have a non-technical audience on YouTube that I'm trying to teach how to program. So these API functions need to abstract away as much complexity as possible. So I'm asking it to write me code that is very, very simple. Then I talk to it a little bit here about what the different authentication options should be. And then I tell it explicitly here the types of limit order functions that I want it to write, including the parameters that I'd like to pass into the limit order functions. And then at the end here, I'm asking it the most important question that I always ask ChatGPT when I want it to give me the best responses. I'm asking it, please ask me five to 10 more questions that will help you get a better understanding of of, in this case, what we're trying to build in the strategy folder. But whatever you were trying to get ChatGPT to help you do, you would say, please ask me five to 10 more questions that will help you get a better understanding of, and then whatever you're trying to build. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to stop ChatGPT from taking a really small prompt and hallucinating all of this stuff around it. Instead, it's going to come up with all of these new questions that it doesn't know the answer to. You're going to then refeed it the answers to all of those questions. And then it's going to build you exactly what you asked for. And so then finally, in this example, you can see here that I gave it the entire library of code that we were already working from. And in the Coinbase Advanced Trade example, you could give it the entire Coinbase Advanced Trade documentation so that it knew exactly what library to be working from instead of hallucinating that we're still using the Coinbase Pro library. And so then down here, when we see ChatGPT's response, we can see the additional questions that it wanted me to fill out, including how we're going to be retrieving the spot price, what type of order we're making, 
making, our order confirmation, how we're going to handle errors, the kinds of feedback that we want to give the user if we need to be placing batch orders. And so then obviously you can choose to answer or not answer the different questions that it's given back to you to help it learn exactly what you're trying to build. Next, let's move on to a second example here. And with this example, I'm hoping to illustrate to you guys why it's not a total waste of your time to still go ahead and learn the basics of programming. Stuff like algorithms and data structures and even design patterns can be really helpful with your conversations with ChatGPT and can allow you to further constrain the things that ChatGPT builds for you. So here we have a prompt that at this point should be a red flag to you. I say, write a class that authenticates my Coinbase API connection. And ChatGPT does the same thing that it did in the last prompt and completely hallucinates a library with which to interact with Coinbase. And so if you tried to run this code, this code just wouldn't work, which again is very deceptive because if you're just looking at this code, it looks like the kind of code that would work. But again, because I just gave it this very basic prompt with no real information about how the Coinbase API works, ChatGPT returned to me code that looks kind of good, but actually doesn't do anything. And so if we scroll down, we can see the better prompt. I said, rewrite the authentication module cbauth.py. And then I'm providing the cbauth.py module here just in plain text. And then I say using a singleton pattern, which is a programming design pattern that's very popular. And then I ask it to add comments to explain why a singleton pattern is good, provide some pros and cons, and compare this design to some alternative designs. And so then I just copy and paste all of the relevant code that I want it to refactor. And this is what it says here. It explains to me exactly what a singleton pattern is. It explains to me what the existing CB auth implementation does within the context of my broader package that I just fed to it. It gives me some comments as to why I might want my CB auth class to be a singleton pattern. It gives me a bunch of different pros and cons that are going to help me better understand what this singleton design pattern is, what it does, and why I might want to use it or not use it in my production software. And then it gives me some alternative patterns that if I wanted to learn more about, I could just say, hey, chat GPT, what is a dependency injection? Hey, chat GPT, what is a factory pattern? Why might I want to use a factory pattern versus not use a factory pattern? And then, you know, what is module level state? If I wanted to learn anything more about any of these things, instead of now having to go read a computer science textbook or having to just randomly fall into understanding these patterns at some point during my career, ChatGPT is surfacing these things for me. And now I can have a conversation if I want to learn more about any of these alternatives. So again, understanding what design patterns and algorithms and data structures are and being able to use those technical words in a conversation with ChatGPT is just going to accelerate the progress of your learning. You could even ask it something like, please design this with five different design patterns, show me the code for each one, and then give me the pros and cons of all design patterns. And that's going to drastically increase your rate of learning because you're going to be seeing in real life examples that you actually care about because you're building software that's solving a problem that you're trying to solve, what the pros and cons of these different design patterns or algorithms or data structures are. And so then finally, because it didn't actually rewrite the files that I was asking it to rewrite, and it just gave me this sort of text example of the questions that I was asking it, I finally ask it rewrite those files using the singleton design pattern. And while this might normally look like a red flag sort of prompt, we can see that because I already fed it all of this key information about the code package that we were working with and the problem that we were trying to solve, I can kind of get away with asking it a one line prompt down here. It's giving me much more realistic code specific to the actual problem that I'm trying to solve and the actual library that I'm working out of instead of hallucinating some old Coinbase Pro library that no longer exists. And then it's even giving me key feedback in this rewrite. It's telling me exactly the things that it changed. And then again, it's reiterating why why we would use a singleton in the first place as opposed to the old design of both of these class files. So to recap the high level takeaways of what we just talked about there, first of all, always give ChatGPT as much context as possible. If you're ever sending one sentence, that should be a red flag to you. And the quick hack for giving ChatGPT more context is having it ask you five to 10 questions that then you can answer to help it not hallucinate code that looks kind of good, but actually doesn't work. It's gonna save you a ton of time in debugging and it's gonna give ChatGPT the opportunity to produce much higher quality code for you. Number two, sort of in the same vein as number one, if you're ever using a specific library that you want ChatGPT to understand and to expand on, make sure that you're copying and pasting the exact code that you want ChatGPT to edit from so that it doesn't hallucinate some other library that's out there and start to produce code for you that actually doesn't do anything. And then finally, while ChatGPT is going to 10x your ability to write good code and the speed at which you're going to be able to learn how to program, it is still really important to understand the basics of programming like data structures, like algorithms, 
algorithms and like design patterns so that you can ask very specific questions and better understand the trade-offs of the code that ChatGPT is writing for you. Basically what ChatGPT has done is it's taken us all from being entry-level programmers to now we're all software architects. But if you're a software architect and you can't speak the language of the entry-level programmers that you're trying to direct, you're going to end up directing them into a wall and creating crap code that doesn't do anything. And then finally, if you want to learn more about how I've used ChatGPT to write video scripts and other content for social media, or if you just want access to this video content early, check out the link to the blog down in the description. Like the video if you learned something and check out this video over here to see the full Coinbase Advanced Trade API that I built using ChatGPT. I love you all. See you next week.